Hey everybody, it's me, your buddy Dave, the host here of the Dark Stuff channel on YouTube. Thanks a lot for stopping by, for checking out my latest video. Now this video that you're watching right now is way outside of my comfort zone. This is not areas that I normally venture into. A casual glance at my channel will tell you that I mostly talk about records, concerts, etc. But I'm here today to talk about uh, something that's just been on my mind and really, really baffling to me about the reaction to the television show The Acolyte, which is part of the Star Wars universe. So I'm, I'm going to give my, my hot take on the Acolyte. Now, I am not a recap channel. I don't ordinarily talk about this kind of stuff, as I said. I do watch plenty of other recap channels for Star Wars, Star Trek, Game of Thrones, uh, anything David Lynch. Before we get started, let me give you my, my Star Wars story. So as you can tell, I'm old, okay? I'm 53 years old, and I was around when the original Star Wars came out. We just used to call it Star Wars back then. They didn't call it A New Hope in 1977. Anyways, I was six years old at the time. I saw Star Wars in the theater in 1977 at the old um, Indian Hills movie theater in Omaha. Rest in peace. It's gone now. It's just a parking lot, I think. And I was one of those first generation of Star Wars kids that was obsessed with those first three movies, that bought all the toys, that experienced the heartbreak of knowing when you got older, your parents threw all that shit away the second you moved out of the house, and now it's worth a bazillion dollars, and you just lost that because it's all gone. I was part of that initial wave. But after 1983, there wasn't much going on in Star Wars, as most of you know. And it was a, a, a decade and a half before they made the other movie. So when those prequel movies came out, I was critical of them initially. I thought they were too long and I didn't like the dialogue. And, you know, what people focused on was dumb shit like Jar Jar Binks and not really what the show was at, what those movies were actually um, showing you playing out till we get to what we know as Star Wars, you know? Over time, I've come to actually appreciate those sequels a lot more, mostly because of a more thorough understanding of the politics of the whole, you know, Star Wars universe and, and the Republic and the Empire and the Jedi and the Sith and all of that sort of stuff. Now, you're gonna have to forgive me because I don't know every technical term. I don't have a team of writers researching this stuff. So if I get people's names wrong or the planet or the era or whatever, just, okay, forgive me, don't at me. It just, it, it's, it, it happens. Now that uh, Star Wars has expanded into all of these different shows, there was the original trilogy, there was the prequels, and there was the three films that came after it, the, the Ray era, you know? And now we've got all these various shows. So you're talking about Ahsoka and Andor and Boba Fett and Kenobi and Mandalorian and all of these things, plus all the animated shows. And I can tell you that I've seen all of the live action shows. I have seen very little of the animated shows. They seem too much like kid stuff for me, even though I've been told by people very close to me that that's a huge mistake. I can't really get into the Clone Wars or the Bad Batch or any of that other stuff. I just put that off to one side. The basic description, the two sentence description of what the Acolyte is about is this. It says a former Padawan reunites with her Jedi Master to investigate a series of crimes, but discovers the forces they confront are more sinister than they ever anticipated. Okay, that sounds pretty good. So as I started watching The Acolyte, with anticipation, as I do with every Star Wars series, and I'm not one of these people that says you have to love everything just because it says Star Wars. I mean, I thought Boba Fett was kind of slow and ultimately made me realize maybe that wasn't a character worth exploring into an entire show. Ahsoka, Although I like Rosario Dawson a lot, I love her, and I also like the, the woman from uh, Battlestar Galactica, her name is escaping me right now. I thought that show was a little dull too, you know? Loved Andor. Uh, loved The Mandalorian. And okay, so it, this is me saying, you don't have to love everything in the Star Wars world to, uh, to, to still say you're a fan and, and you're, to not be a hater. But some of this stuff, the, 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 the stuff being leveled about 
Um, the Acolyte is just hard to grapple with. It basically comes down to a couple of different criticisms. Number one is it doesn't feel like Star Wars to me. It doesn't feel like it, okay? We'll, we'll get to that. Number two is some variation of this show is woke. The show is woke. And why are these people pursuing a personal political agenda in this show? Why can't they just tell us a story and stop putting in your political agenda? Now, first of all, I dismiss that shit right out of hand because if you throw in the word woke when you're talking about Star Wars or Star Trek or any of this stuff, I'm discounting your view because I really don't think it's legitimate. These are people who are upset because most of the people on the screen are not white men. Like when you look at, at Acolyte, you see a lot of faces of color. You see a lot of women. Now it's not as, as some people have been billed a woman's Star Wars or uh, a gay Star Wars. Like people are like, oh my God, it's all these lesbian witches and stuff. I, God, oh my God, people just get so upset about nothing, okay? But the other criticism, the third one is just, uh, I just don't, it's done poorly. It's bad writing. It's a bad story, okay? I, I'm going to tell you, I don't agree with any of that, okay? So what's happening in this show is this is technically supposed to be like a hundred years prior to The Phantom Menace, which is, what, maybe 30 years or so prior to what we know as Star Wars, 30 or 40 years um, before that. So we're talking about 140 years, maybe 130, from the era where we were introduced to all of the concepts that you hear in Star Wars. You heard about the Force, you heard about the Jedi, you heard about Darth Vader and then the Sith and all of this. And the way we understood things based on the movie as we initially heard it in 1977, okay, in this thing, okay, there were like two Jedis, period. They've been completely wiped out. If people referred to that as the Jedi part of the past. They, uh, some of the Empire people were mocking Darth Vader, calling it, calling the Force like an ancient superstition or an ancient religion, you know, like, and making fun of it. And people thought that the the idea of a Jedi was was nuts. They they didn't think they existed anymore. There was there was Obi Wan Kenobi, and there was Yoda, who we didn't really know existed yet till the second film. Okay, as far as the dark side of the Force, that was represented by Darth Vader and then the Emperor in. In the other, in the second movie, in the third movie. So for us, that's it. So the lines were very clearly delineated. I also want to take this side, make a little side note, and to say that I've never felt that Star Wars, as in the the films, were sci-fi. They're not science fiction. They're fantasy set in space. There is a clearly delineated good guy, clearly delineated bad guy, and you know what side you're on. Okay, and it's just a question of good versus evil. Lots of action, lots of dogfighting in space and all of that. That was the characteristic of Star Wars. But it's not science fiction. It's, science fiction is different. The Expanse is science fiction, right? Star Trek is science fiction. But, but Star Wars isn't. But I think it's venturing into that with all of these expanded shows. So as I was saying, we were introduced to all these concepts in a very, very small fashion because there's only one, right? There's Obi-Wan Kenobi. When he dies, I guess Luke Skywalker becomes the other one. And then there's still Yoda still in the picture until he dies. Sorry, spoiler if you haven't seen the original movies. <laughs> one of the real eye-opening things about those prequels was seeing an era where there were lots and lots of Jedis. There were hundreds of them, you know? And they're flying all over and they're badasses and they're not, you know, relying on little parlor tricks like doing this to make you, you know, say it's okay for us to pass by or whatever. I mean... They were all over the place. They were, the, in a sense, the galactic policemen. But if you saw in those films, that was the end of the Jedi over those three films. Okay, It was the collapse of them. The, they got beaten politically. They got taken over. by the, the, the Sith sort of infiltrated them and all of that. And the Sith are the, the people who operate the dark side. And again, we only had a minimal, minimal, minimal understanding. If you heard Yoda and whatever in the films, the Force is everywhere. Everyone can have the Force. It's all, you know, it's just a question of focusing in on it. In the prequels, you learn that it's not exactly true. There is this metachlorine stuff. They, they added some science to it. They made it science. 
It's not just that everybody has the force and everybody can tap into it. No, there's, a, there's another element to it. Where we are in the Acolyte is probably at the Jedi at their peak. Their peak numbers, they've got tons of them. They're all over the galaxy. They're on almost every planet. They settle all disputes. They do all of this stuff for nations of the Republic. But one of the things that is very fond of saying is that's true from a certain point of view. This is what infuriates some people, that the criticism of the show, who say it doesn't feel like Star Wars. Well, from a certain point of view, we've only seen the Jedi as these really good guys, because there's only two of them in the original Star Wars movies. And we've, we've only seen what is known as the dark side, implemented by a Sith and, a, and an apprentice, the Emperor Darth Vader, right? That's how we understood it. But as it was understood, 150 years earlier it was a different world back then and there are always people who have different views let's look at it say 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 the jedi were like the u.s military now here in america we value the military very highly they're praised you know they get to get on airplanes first everyone's thank you for your service all of that stuff right but if you ask people in other countries maybe they don't have the same fondness for our military some do and some don't and that's an entitled opinion. So is the United States military this awesome, do-gooding machine? Well, it depends on your point of view. That's the same thing going on here. In this, what we're seeing is the Jedi are not only settling disputes between peoples, but they are policing the force, okay? The show starts off and, and the main character, uh, one of the main characters, May, kills a Jedi Master, okay, in a, in a fight. And you really don't know why it's doing it, but it's the frame up of, oh, this Jedi must be the good person, and this other person who just killed this Jedi must be the bad person. And because the show doesn't clearly say that, some people are freaking out about, it, it, it's unclear, well, why are they making the, 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 the dark side look good, or the Sith, or whatever. We don't even know who this chick is, but all of a sudden, people are putting all this stuff on it. Something happened 16 years before where we're at now, okay? That's why Carrie Ann Moss was killed. That's why this woman is out there going to try to kill certain Jedis. So part of that different point of view is the ways the Force should be utilized and taught. And in this time frame, with their lots and lots of Jedis all over the place, they become the police as far as who can use the Force. And there is a law in their Republic that says that uh, only Jedi are allowed to teach children the Force. That if you're caught doing that, that you're just punishable, we're going to take your kids, whatever. And there's this whole side thing of the Jedi taking kids. I mean, they find somebody when they're three or four years old, they test high on this Metachlorian shit, and then all of a sudden, they're taken. Now, we've always been trained to see that as something good, <clears throat> but maybe there are cultures out there in this world who see that as something bad. In this case, there is a coven of witches who use the force. And they don't call it the force, I think they call it the string or something, but whatever. They're using the force, and they are teaching it to a child. And the Jedi come rushing in, oh hey, what, what are you doing? Why are you teaching children the force? You know, in the Republic, only we can do that. The woman points out Mother Anicia or whatever, and she says, okay, but we're not part of the Republic. So you have no authority here. The Jedi didn't care. They had a problem with it, and some would say they sought to end this particular problem. We see there's a massacre, okay? All of these dead witches. Uh, the building burns down. These two girls, May and her sister, um, Osha were the two children that were being taught the force they get Osha out of there they believe May died in the fire and told May or told Osha their surviving sister your sister's dead and it's because May burned down this building that you and your mother and all of these witches lived in it's her fault end of story move on what we find out is that little incident may not be exactly the way it was explained. We thought, okay, May's still alive. She was the one who killed Carrie Ann Moss in episode one. Now, I don't want to go point by point into this show, but what I'm saying is this feels a whole hell of a lot like Star Wars to me. Okay, I, I, 
I'm not seeing how this is not Star Wars to me. They're, they're talking about the Force. They're talking about the Republic. They're talking about the Sith. Because that's the introduction. Who, what is this dark factor? Who is this girl? They know it's May, or they think it's May. But they, were, they believed she died over 15 years ago. Now she's back. Who's guiding her? Is she being guided by the Sith? Is she being guided by somebody else who kind of practices the dark side? Those witches use some dark side stuff. I mean, they put a Jedi under a spell. The guy could, he was like, he couldn't move. He didn't know what the fuck he was, I mean, what he was doing. Um, and then they could just take it off. Okay, so pretty, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm finding this shit fascinating. The origins of, of the, the, the conflict that made the Jedi almost go extinct. Like, we already know the after effects. It already happened, okay? So you don't have to put a moral judgment or whatever, but, I mean, I saw somebody freaking out on a video, I wish I saved it or something, of being like, no, you don't understand. The Jedi are the good guys, always. And any deviation from the, the Jedi have to be the good... Okay, well, first of all, it, it stands to... It, it, it needs to be pointed out, all this stuff is fiction. There are no Jedi. Okay, guys, so don't, don't, don't get so upset. You know, and when people are like, well, it, it changes canon or it's off canon that for me, I don't give a shit. OK, it's fiction. One of the things that I think leads to general confusion and to why maybe people aren't attaching to this is that the story of Star Wars has been told in a nonlinear way. OK, we started off Star Wars A New Hope was supposedly number four in the story. Now, I I actually doubt that George Lucas really had nine movies written out and he started with number four. I think he wrote Star Wars and then decided, oh yeah, I've got all these other, you know, whatever, maybe, okay? My point in that is we saw movies four, five, six. Then they went backwards a few decades. We saw one, two, three. Then we go back forwards a few decades after that. So we've been told this story in a nonlinear way and We've, it's always been kind of this confusing, are we in the future, are we in the past, you know, and then some of the shows are like 20 years before that, or the same era as this, or this happened at the same time, you know, um, and so we're getting this stuff from all over the place, we're getting Young Han Solo, we get the origins of the rebellion, we get, you know, all of this, th these things, and, and it can be difficult to keep it in line. But to understand there is a strong linear story here and it is making sense and the origins of what caused the Jedi to die I think is very very interesting and again I dismiss all the woke shit um, but I am baffled why people think that the, the writing and the acting is just so horrible first of all there's one major star and that's Carrie Ann Moss and in most Star Wars type stuff there usually aren't major actors. I mean, you, you and you and McGregor, and, and a handful of others. Okay, I mean, you could say Harrison Ford, sure, but Harrison Ford wasn't a, as major a deal in 1977. He became a, a massive guy, but that's neither here nor there. The 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 haters online went wild with Episode Three, and that was the flashback to when we saw the witches, the Jedi coming in, being upset that they were training children and the witches all getting wiped out, May and Osha separated, Osha goes with the Jedi, and May seemingly dies. Again, I don't know why that was so bothersome to people. Shows do flashbacks all the time. I think it was important to show the events that happened, at least from one person's perspective, and that is Osha's perspective. I mean, what it looks like in this episode is these Jedis, four of them, came into this witch's coven's house or whatever, and then killed all of the witches, took Osha, and they were gonna take May too, but she seemingly died in the fire, so they just left. And they blamed it on May and said that she started a fire and that killed everybody there, and that's been the operating principle that uh, the, the other sister, Osha, has been operating on this entire time. That's what these Jedi reported to the senior Jedis, and that's all anyone knows. But now that we see it, those people didn't die in a fire. They were just dead. They were sitting there. They weren't burned. Okay, we know what people who burn in a fire look like. That wasn't it. So there is some type of cover-up. Does that bother you, that the Jedi did something wrong? I mean, these, these four Jedis. Now we're seeing that that 
murder of Carrie Ann Moss was targeted because she was one of the four Jedi who were there on that planet when that thing happened. And we still don't really know, you know, specifically what it was, what, what did happen that particular day, we just think. Episode four, which we all survived episode three, I thought was fantastic. We're now caught up. May and Osha existing together. They're both aware of the other's presence, okay? May is on this quest to continue to kill those four Jedis, she's killed two of them at this point, and she is on to number three. And that is a Wookiee Jedi, whose name I'm blanking on, who was cool seeing a Wookiee Jedi and seeing how he lived in the woods in this like ship that was like embedded in this tree and the tree kind of grew around it, whatever. At the same time, the Jedi are on a search to find May, and they brought Osha with her to sort of lure her out. This is coming to a confrontation. They want to make sure she doesn't kill this Wookiee too late, unfortunately, and to see what the hell is going on. And as this, as the episode ends, they track May into this little house in the woods, and they're confronted by this weird-looking dude in a mask, who we assume is a Sith. And the Jedi, keeping in mind, if you're talking about the lore, they think these guys are extinct and haven't been around in a thousand years. So their first instinct probably isn't like, oh my God, it's a Sith. You know, they're just like, who's this freak in a mask? And then he turns on the red lightsaber and everyone loses their shit. You know, they're all like, hey, stand down over there, Mr. Mr. Guy in a mask, you know, acting all high and noble. And he just takes Osha and goes like this, and pushes her off to the side. And then the Jedi, I'll turn on their lightsabers, come rushing and attack, and he just dismisses them, just pushes them all away. A, a dozen Jedi, just psh, end of scene. That's fascinating. Well, what are you talking about? How are you not interested to see? Is this a Sith Lord? Is this the Apprentice? Is this the reemergence of the Sith? Have they been here all along? Is this just a dark magic, a dark side of the Force practitioner? Is this one of these witches? Is this a, somebody maybe survived? And now they're doing this. They're wearing the mask. Maybe they're not a Sith. Maybe they're just, you know, we just don't know. There's that Asian guy that was walking with her, uh, with, with May on the planet. The apothecary guy who invented the poison that killed the other Jedi. He's riding along. Is that the master? Is that the Sith guy? Or is that just too obvious? I mean, look, there's all these fucking questions. I, I think this stuff is very, very interesting, and I'm into this show. They've had boring shows in the past. This one, to me, it was a little slow getting to, the, the, to, to where we are now, but the fact of the matter is, this is a mystery. Mysteries take time to unfold, okay? Maybe we haven't had a Star Wars mystery uh, where you see events from different perspectives, and then you have to come to the conclusion at the end, or the, it takes you to a conclusion at the end. I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling here and I'm, I'm making some of the same points that I, I was always making. But I'm just coming on to say that if you've heard things without watching it, that it doesn't feel like Star Wars or it's some agenda-driven show. It's virtue signaling for lesbians and, and this kind of thing. If it is, who gives a shit? I don't think it is. But any of that stuff, just dismiss that. Okay, just watch the show. I think it fits very well into the story of Star Wars, and I think that when we're as we're moving backwards in time, because we're learning about stuff beforehand, to try to rate it based on something from 150 years later and just say, well, it doesn't fit the same. Anyways, listen, this is just one guy's perspective who has watched the first half of the series and doesn't understand the hatred. Maybe you're like me. You don't think that there's any agenda behind it. You just want to watch a good show and see what happens. And I think the show is getting progressively better. I watch The Acolyte, and I think you should give it a shot. If you've been scared off by some of the negative press and some of the, uh, the low score on Rotten Tomatoes or whatever, um, just remember that, that you don't know those people. You don't know those people. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. So, uh... You have a MySpace page or something?